Hello students, this is Rahima, your very own biology expert from Ask IITNs. In this video, we are going to discuss about improvement in the food resources. No, don't go on the cliche title because in this video, we are not going to discuss about the old chestnut. So let's begin. Improvement in food resources. So we are going to cover the following to topics. Uh, first, we are going to start with the introduction. Okay. Uh, then we will move on to the green revolution, which is uh, a revolution and much more. Then we are going to move on to the agriculture crop and its type and the need methods and breeding of crop variety improvement. So let's start. Uh, when we say uh, improvement in the food resources, we are not just tackling one problem. We are tackling at least six problems, which include food security, adapting to climate change. Uh, we, we are also focusing on reducing the environmental degradation. We are protecting national uh, nutritional security reducing property uh, poverty sorry and we are also looking at ensuring the most important thing that is sustainable agriculture so these are these are just six reasons why it matters to conserve the crop diversity okay food security the concept of food security is actually very complex when we talk about it, it is not only uh, it, it does not only involve uh, the production and processing of nutritious food, but it also uh, involves access by individuals to the full range of nutrients uh, that are needed to maintain an active and healthy lifestyle. Crop diversity is central to food security. It it underpins today's production and it provides the raw material which is needed for ensuring continuing supplies tomorrow in the face of a rapidly changing world. The fight to achieve food security and end hunger is one of the greatest challenges uh, facing the world. Rising population, diminishing resources and deteriorating environment only raise the stakes. So you understand why we are studying this topic. It is not just the topic. It is much more than that. And we are going to learn and fix it in our mind after we end this chapter. So let's begin with the uh, first and foremost green revolution. Green revolution is the great increase in the production of food grains from introduction of new high yielding varieties, which began in the mid 20th century. But green revolution uh, is not all advantageous. It has many disadvantages also. Like poor farmers, they were unable to afford the fertilizers and pesticides because this actually increased green revolution increase the production uh, and uh, consumption of fertilizers and uh, pesticides. So they have often reaped even lower yields with these grains and with the older than with the older strains, which were better adapted to local conditions and had some resistance to pet pests and diseases in that particular region. So this is the problem which is faced by farmers even today, even after green revolution. So this is MS Swaminathan. You all must have recognized him. And in full, he is Monkombu Sambasivan Swaminathan. He's an Indian uh, geneticist. Yes, he is. He is still alive. And uh, an international administrator who, who is renowned for his role in India's Green Revolution. Uh, Green Revolution in India is a program under which high yielding varieties of wheat and rice were planted in the fields of poor farmers. He also, uh, he also helped introducing the Mexican semi-dwarf wheat plants uh, to the Indian fields and he, uh, he also uh, brought about greater acceptance of modern farming method, uh, methods under this program of Green Revolution. So 
fix this picture in your mind because it is going to come in the questions later uh okay so you must also recognize this uh, person this great personality he is norman ernest borlaug american agricultural scientist plant pathologist and a winner of nobel prize for peace for peace in 1970 he is known as the father of green revolution he helped lay down lay the groundwork for the agricultural technological advances that alleviated world hunger he assisted impoverished farmers who struggled with disease and low producing crops and borlaug experimented with novel varieties of wheat creating disease resistant strains that could withstand the harsh climate a uh, norman borlaug is a very important personality uh, actually and uh, he studied plant biology and forestry at the university of minnesota and he earned a phd uh, at the uh, in plant pathology there in 1942 he began working with the dupont company in 1942 but was soon recruited as a research scientist in charge of wheat improvement for rockefeller uh, foundation in mexico uh and where he worked from 1944 to 1960 so green revolution has resulted in increased production of food grains especially wheat and rice and was in large part due to the introduction of new and high yielding varieties in the developing countries uh, beginning in the mid 20th century with borlaug's work At a research station at Campto Atizapan, Borlaug developed a short-stemmed strain of wheat that dramatically increased crop yields. Previously, the taller wheat varieties uh, would break under the uh, weight of uh, heads uh, when the crop production was increased uh, by using chemical fertilizers. Borlaug's short-stemmed wheat. could withstand the increased weight of fertilized heads and was a key element in the green revolution in developing countries wheat production in mexico multiplied three fold owing to this and other varieties so this was the story about norman borlaug i will just show this again with india and pakistan facing the food shortages due to rapid population growth the importation of borlaug's dwarf wheat in the mid uh, 1960s was responsible for a 60% increase in harvest there helping both countries to become agriculturally self sufficient borlaug also created a wheat dry hybrid known as triticale and its methods were used by others to develop a variety of high uh, highly productive rice this increase yield that resulted from borlaug's new strains empowered many developing countries though the use required large amount of chemical fertilizers and pesticides these high yielding varieties therefore raised concerns about cost and potentially uh, harmful environmental effects the borlaug argued that uncontrolled population growth had necessitated plant uh, had necessitated such production methods so this is the story about the green revolution quite interesting now let's move on to the agriculture and in agriculture the practices uh, involved in farming can be divided into three stages uh, first there should be a choice of seed for planting then nurturing of the crop plants should be there and protection of growing and harvested crops from losses these are the three important points that should be kept in mind by the farmers if they want to increase the crop production 
there are two types of crops kharif crops and rabi crops kharif crops they are they are grown in winter from june to november and rabi crops from uh, june to october sorry and rabi crops from november to april so important examples of kharif crops are paddy soybean pigeon pea maize cotton green gram and black gram and rabi crops are wheat gram peas mustard etc obviously there are more examples so this is uh, these are just the types of crops in the crop variety improvement need i am again going to focus on the points uh, that i told you in the beginning in the introduction okay uh, let's move on to that slide again so we discussed about food security we discussed about uh, ensuring sustainable agriculture we discussed about adapting to climate change we discussed about reducing environmental degradation we discussed about protecting the nutritional security and obviously reducing poverty these are the six things that you have to remember when you are uh, talking about uh, the need for crop variety improvement so i am going to uh, list them on the next slide also on this slide i mean ensuring a nutritional security reducing poverty adapting to climate change sustainable agriculture and ensuring food security these are some of the points why crop variety improvement is needed now for improving the crop variety we have to select the useful characters the selection of useful characters are very important so when a farmer is provided with the seeds the seeds uh, they should be of uh, different varieties they should be of different characters they should be adaptable uh, to the different condi environmental conditions and they should also have some nutritional characteristics uh, so that they are uh, advantageous to the farmers hybridization is one such technique by which we can uh, select the useful characters and use them to our advantage so it refers to a crossing between the genetically dissimilar plants so suppose one plant has uh, high sugar content and one plant has higher yield but low sugar content uh, and we if we cross them the hybrid of this cross will have high sugar content and higher yield so this is actually true for one uh, sugar cane hybrid uh, one variety of sugar cane had uh, uh, low sugar but higher yield and other variety of sugar cane had high sugar but lower yield when a hybrid was created uh, between these with these two sugar cane varieties uh, the hybrid actually had high sugar content and higher yield so hybridization can be intervarietal which is between different varieties it can be interspecific that is between two different species of the same genus and it can be intergeneric that means between two different genera and another way of crop improving the crop is by introducing a gene a desirable gene that carries a particular desirable characteristic this results 
in GMOs, genetically modified crops. Some of the genetically modified crops are BT cotton. BT cotton is basically uh, resistant uh, to cotton ball worms. I can only give this example because this example is widely used presently. Uh, there are other BT crops also, but they are not in use. So BT cotton is the best example for a genetically modified crop. Other genetically modified crops have been produced, have been created, but uh, they are not in use because of some uh, ethical problems, safety concerns, etc. Now, the factors uh, that are important for improving uh, the crop variety include higher yield, and this is the production increase in the production per acre, increase in the production of a crop per acre. Production. Then there is improved quality. Now these uh, quality depends, uh, it, it uh, varies from crop to crop. Uh, for example, baking quality is important for wheat and uh, the baking quality is important for wheat crop. Oil quality is uh, important for oil seeds, uh, protein quality uh, is important for uh, pulses and uh, preserving quality is important for vegetables and fruits. So quality depends on the crop. There are biotic and a uh, there is biotic and abiotic resistance also. So these are the stresses, the biotic stresses includes insects, nematodes uh, and uh, basically any kind of disease uh, which reduces the crop production. Abiotic uh, stresses include heat, cold, uh, there is frost, there is drought, salinity, waterlogged soil. All these abiotic uh, factors can reduce the crop production. So if these two problems, if there are varieties, that are resistant to both biotic and abiotic uh, uh, stresses, the crop production can be increased and these varieties, they can be grown in the uh, in many areas with different climatic conditions. Change in maturity duration is the fourth factor. The maturity Du uh, duration uh, can help in improve, uh, improving the crop production uh, from uh, basically the lesser the uh, the lesser the time is spent from sowing to harvesting the more economical the crop is uh, this is because the farmers they it, it it will allow farmers to grow multiple uh, crops in a year and uh, it will also reduce the cost of crop production and it will make the harvesting easier and uh, it will uh, also help in reducing the losses during harvesting. So these are some of the uh, factors which can help if, uh, which can help in uh, increasing the crop production when maturity duration is changed. So this is from sowing to harvesting. Remember, sowing to harvesting. Then there is wider adaptability. So if there is a crop uh, that is adaptable to wider climatic conditions, so, so it can be, if, if, it is, if it has wider adaptability, it can withstand wider uh, climatic conditions then it, is, uh, it will be possible to grow it in many areas, which will dramatically increase the crop production. Next is desirable agronomic characteristic. Profuse branching is uh, desirable for fodder crops and uh, dwarfness is desirable for the cereal, uh, cereals uh, so that they consume less nutrients. 
and uh, agrono if there are desirable agronomic characteristics then it will obviously help in increasing the crop production so these are some of the factors five factors basically and now we will begin with the questions so the first question is you have to name two protein containing rabi crops so the two protein containing rabi crops are gram and p so you can give other examples also so if you are thinking about uh, other rabi crops which are high in protein uh, then you are probably correct then the next question is about hybridization and we have to also list two advantages of hybridization so hybridization is the cross between two different varieties having desirable characteristics the two advantages are uh it can produce disease resistant varieties with this it can also help in uh, producing the varieties that have wider adaptability that can grow in uh, different climatic conditions having wider adaptability okay so let's move on to the next question so you have to uh, list two desirable uh, traits for fodder crops so first for the fodder crops first is tallness and the second is profuse branching branching that is going in every direction that is very good for fodder crops uh, and uh, if you're probably thinking about the cereal crops then it was dwarfness dwarfness means short plants the size should be short so in this question we have to define the term photo period photo period is the amount of light that is required by a particular plant to flower okay required by the plant to flower so flowering is basically uh appearance of flower is basically one of the most important feature by which the farmers they see if the uh, what what is the growth period of a crop so there are on the basis of the photo period requirement of the photo period requirement of the light there are three types of uh, plants there are long day plants they require more than 12 hours of light there are short day plants they require less than 12 hours of light okay short day plants are more sensitive than the long day plants so during this uh, period of dark which is provided to the short day plants even if they are disturbed with a flash of light they won't flower uh, 
okay which is not the case with long day plants with the long day plants if uh, during their period of light if they are exposed to dark they will still flower and there are day neutral plants also day nu day neutral plants require 12 hours of light and 12 hours of dark so this is photo period and these are the three types of uh, plants depending upon uh, the amount of light that they require next question is name the type of farming which is performed without the use of fertilizers and pesticides so this is to jog your memory to make your brain work a little bit because this topic i'm going to explain in the next video so any thoughts any thoughts about this question if you're probably thinking about organic farming then you are apt absolutely correct because organic farming doesn't require any use of fertilizers and pesticides and it is quite a craze nowadays actually uh, not a craze you can say it is a necessity also with the health concerns different health concerns people are carrying and uh, people are more moving towards you know this nomadic lifestyle nomadic agriculture style which will help in ensuring sustainable agriculture remember i told you sustainable agriculture is very important so uh, you probably can go to your uh, inventory the kitchen pantry and look for uh, these uh, organic uh, pulses and you know organic uh, uh, spices the boxes they will carry all the information you can read them and uh, you can get the information about the companies also if you are very curious so with this let's move on to the next question where we have to mention two advantages of shortening the duration of crop from sowing uh, till harvesting so uh, this is quite a straight forward from sowing till harvesting if the duration is uh, shortened then uh, the farmers will be able to grow multiple crops in a year second reason is that it will reduce the cost of crop production which is very important thinking about the condition of farmers in india it is very important for reducing the cost and also it is uh, a good thing for ensuring sustainable again sustainable agriculture so you remember this person can you identify him of course you can and you have to mention any one of his achievements you are absolutely correct he is m s swaminathan i am not going to go into his full form uh, of his name because it is uh difficult obviously uh but yes his achievements are not difficult he uh, was an agricultural wizard and uh, he helped the poor farmers of india poor farmers to grow a uh, new and high yielding varieties in their fields which is an achievement so thanks to mr ms swaminathan and he is also regarded as father of green revolution in india so let's move on to the two disadvantages of green revolution in india so while i was explaining uh, uh green revolution uh 
i also told you i also uh, focused on the disadvantages okay so here we are going to recapitulate them green revolution in india actually required uh, the use of pesticides and fertilizers which made uh which made it impossible for the farmers uh, for the poor farmers especially uh to use them in their uh fields to grow the crops and secondly with the use of pesticides and fertilizers the second reason is actually connected to the first one how the use of pesticides and fertilizers will increase the concerns increased concern i will just erase this concerns over environmental sustainability so here also again i will raise the same issue environmental sustainability is also connected to the sustainable agriculture so it you can say that it is just one of the uh, branches of sustainable agriculture so both of these are connected but in a way they are also different because uh, environmental sustainability can also be threatened uh, by the use of the uh, new varieties okay uh, which can uh, outnumber the use of uh, the local variety these which are you know already resistant to pets uh, and uh, diseases okay so with this on this note i'm going to end the video guys i hope you liked it and most of all understood it if you have any doubts you can post them on the forum and i would be very happy to answer your questions and please 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 stay tuned for my next video so that we can continue with such an interesting topic thank you